Hi there, my name is Charles Suazfani Msipa. Welcome to uh, our first presentation of uh, determining or finding eigenvectors. In the previous uh, presentations, we've looked closely at how we compute eigenvectors, uh, eigenvalues of a given matrix. Now we're going to pass to the next stage of finding eigenvectors. So our topic is eigenvectors. Now I want to highlight at this stage that if an exercise states that you must find eigenvectors given a matrix, you must be very clear of the fact that this involves two steps. The first step is our initial step. This number is zero here. It will mean determining the again values. Then our first, our the second step which we are going to focus on today, it will be determining the Yegen vectors. So summarizing, finding Yegen vectors involve these two steps. So they say Yegen vectors here. Now let's recall a bit. We said a vector is an eigenvector if they say it's transformed by a transformation, which in this case is a matrix. Let's say applied to a vector, column vector x, we get a, a lambda multiple of the vector. Then we say it equivalently, this could be taken to the form a minus lambda identity matrix applied to x that will give us a, a zero vector. So now let's and we say, we mentioned before that this equation, this calculus equation actually generates a system of equations. Now let's say x was a vector a column vector with components x1, x2, xn. It's a dash there, that. Now, obvious to do this kind of uh, um, multiplication or this multiplication to mean that this vector xn has got term. Um, n rows, which will mean then the uh, matrix A or the matrix A minus lambda identity must have n columns. So in this case, if we've got, let's say this matrix gave us something like A11, A12, dash dash up to A1n. Now it's representing the n columns. And then a21, a22, up to a2n, then a, let's say this is square matrix, let's say a n1, a n2, dash dash up to a n n. So Applying this matrix on to this vector, it will mean multiplying there by a1, a2, sorry, x2 components up to xn going this way. And then saying at this stage, I'm taking these entries here as the entries of this matrix. So if you multiply this way and say you get zero here, we'll be saying here we've got um, a, a zero vector also which is going to have n entries.
Now, removing the brackets in this case, multiplying, if you remember, now this is an n by n matrix, could be 2 by 2 or 3 by 3, and this is um, n rows by one column. So we can see that these two numbers here, they say we can multiply because n is equal to n there. So if we multiply the first row, we're going to have a11 x1 plus a12 x2 plus up to a11 n x n equals to 0. That is our equation 1, followed by a2 1 x1 plus a 2 2 x 2 plus a 2 n x n equals 2 0 this will be our equation 2 so continuing with that we'll get at the end here, a n1 x1 plus a n2 x2 plus a n n x n equals to 0, which will be our nth equation. So this is what I mean that we mean that when we look at this uh, expression, we must be able to decode it this way and see that it generates n equations and in this case the uh, if this is a square matrix then which means that the number of rows here must be equal to the number of columns of this square matrix and equal that then if we know our lambda then it will mean that when we solve this equation in this case a this type of um, element here will be of that type that you've got uh, something like a number minus lambda or let's say two along, along the principal diagonal this will be in, a, in terms of lambda as we shall see then solving the system of equation now is finding the components xn x1 x2 up to xn is actually the process of finding the again value okay this is all sounds theoretic now let's move to a particular example and let's see how we we can experience this kind of uh, computation so let's say we're given a matrix we're going to start simply with a two by two and look at the whole process we've been discussing previously we've got a matrix a given them so we our task is to find the again vectors so where do we start we start our initial step would be to look at the characteristic polynomial before we can find these uh, zeros which are again values let's get it in its simplest form in this case here we've got a uh, a determinant here now let's recall a bit what we said here. in this case here we've got a which will be a 1 1 a 1 2 a 2 1 a 2 2 and uh, the subtraction between the, uh, the absolute value bars here is that when subtracting a lambda multiple of the identity which is 1 0 0 1 so as you can see if you multiply these two if you multiply it by lambda here the lambda will lie along the diagonal and these two matrices of the same type then you can do subtraction then in the first component here a1 or 1 component 1 1 we're going to have a11 one, one minus lambda in this case our a1 1 1 is 1 so we have 1 minus lambda then we've got our 4 there 
then we have got two coming this side you're going to have equals to be two minus zero be two then here you're going to have three minus lambda so it will be three minus lambda we compute this determinant remember this is the simplest determinant we can compute we multiply the the, the entries on the principal diagonal we have one minus lambda multiplied by three minus lambda minus eight which is the product of the entries on the second diagonal simplifying that we've got we get a, a quadratic expression which is a characteristic polynomial so the quadratic root cubic squared minus four lambda minus five so that's our critical polynomial then second step we set up our equation which is our critical equation now which is lambda minus four lambda minus five equals to zero and luckily this can be factorized to lambda plus one brackets lambda minus five which in this case we can say therefore our eigenvalues are lambda one equals two minus one and the lambda two equals to five. Now we can proceed now to the next step. Let's number it. I'm numbering these steps so clearly so that you can see exactly which steps we must start, where we must start, and where the next step, and so on. Then you can get the method clear. Now, in the next step here, we are going to mimic exactly what we had in the previous. Um, we are going to mimic exactly this. So, our task is to find this vector x, which is an eigenvector. In this case, I am going to say that vector is E1, corresponding to eigenvalue number 1. And this vector is supposed to have components again vector one component number one again vector one component number two so now writing what is said here it means then we've got to have something like this a minus lambda identity applied to an eigenvector equals to zero. Now we know that this vector has got components which is equal to number of rows of this vector and so in this case it's going to be two components. Now if we now consider lambda one equals to minus one now we can say here for lambda one equals to one we now come to this matrix and write exactly what is here we take our lambda one there for minus for minus one then put plus one so which means along that diagonal you are going to have um, something like two four then two again here and then along the, the this point we've got one times uh, times one then be three plus one which will give us four So this matrix is a result of doing this kind of calculation with the corresponding line in this case which is minus one. Then we multiply by our eigenvector in this case. Let's call it eigenvector number one 
consistent with the numbering of lambda. Then this eigen vector number one is going to have component number one, eigen vector number one, component number two. Then when you multiply here, this must give us a zero vector. Now it's in zero vector in R2, so two component vector, zero, zero. So you can see now our known here are the components. So finding the components will be finding an eigen vector. So this is exactly the same or equivalent to saying two e one one plus four e one two equals two zero. That's our equation, first equation. Then here we're going to work in two e one one plus four e one two equals two zero that is our second equation so effectively this translates to a system of equation equations like we'd say now what you need to do now we need to solve this equation forward so as you can see it looks like we've got the same equation Two, so we can just solve for one. Okay, as we have seen, this uh, this expression, following the steps we've gone through here, actually generates this system of equation. So solving this system of equation leads us to finding the values of the components one one and one two, which is actually the process of finding the eigenvalue. Now, for in this case, you can see the equations are the same. So what you can do, we can actually make one of the components here subject to the formula. Let's say taking equation one, you can say two e one one plus um, four e one two equals to zero. Then subtracting 4e12 on both sides here, we get that this equation is equivalent to 2e11 equals 2 minus 4e12, which you can conclude that e11 is actually depends on e12, in this case, is minus 2 e 1 2 so in this case since e 1 1 depends on e 1 2 we can freely choose e 1 2 then we get e 1 1 for example we can say let e 1 2 be equals to 1 I'm choosing 1 for convenience is the easiest number to multiply with that's not a problem. You can choose any of your, any value of your choice. You will still get the same thing. So then, sorry, this is E12. Then this will mean that our E11 is supposed to be minus, sorry. Our E11 is equal to be minus 2 times 1, which will give us minus 2. So then I can make a vector E1, which consists of component number 1, which is uh, minus 2, and the component 2, which is 1. And then this is not a complete answer for problem this is one representative eigen vector among the family of eigen vectors corresponding to minus one remember we said if x is an eigen vector let's say x is an eigen vector so we show that it the beta multiple of x or scalar multiple of x 
is also an eigenvector. So to give a complete answer for this kind of exercise, we would then say the eigenvector one, which we need here, is actually is a, let's use a different uh, symbol here. Is actually alpha multiplied by minus two one. But this is incorporating the fact that if a vector x is an eigenvalue is an eigenvector, then a, land, a scalar multiple of it is also a plane vector. In this case, since our scalars are real numbers, then we can say alpha is a real number. So when we're finding eigen vectors, we're actually not finding one vector, but a family of vectors. And the zero here is included, but in this case, we said we're looking for non-trivial vectors. In other words, vectors which are non-zero. So this is the eigen vector corresponding to lambda equals to minus one. Now, now we've got to proceed and get, um, let's say this is a two, one. So we're going to proceed now and find the eigen vectors for lambda equals to five. So let's come here and say for lambda equals to five, our matrix A was um, one, four, two, three, one, four, two, three, and then we need to do this calculation A minus five I, in this case is I of order two. So we know that these are along the principal, the non-zero entries here are going to be along the principal diagonal. So we're going to work here with the principal diagonal. Then we have something like this. You write a e minus five i applied to again vector number two, say so lambda two equals to zero. That will be equivalent to one minus five, which is going to give us minus four, and then four here, two, three minus five is going to give us minus two, this is this matrix in brackets, multiply by the again vector in this case again vector number two component number one again vector number two component number two then this multiplication if it's an again vector it must give us zero like it said there and now zero here is a zero vector this takes us again to To a system of equations going to be minus 4e21 plus 4e22 equals to 0, and that's our equation 1. And then 2e21 minus the two minus two e two two equals to zero that's equation number two so we solve this equation for e two one and e two two let's say from one now it's from equation one we are getting that minus four e two 2, 1 is equals to minus 4 e 2 2. Now dividing by minus 4 from both, from both sides here, we get that this 
is equivalent to saying e21 is equal to e22. So this is a vector of the form. Let's say e2 components are equal. So we can conveniently choose that to be 1, 1. And because the scalar map of this is also going to be a vector, then uh, we are going to say this is beta, that where beta is a scalar, in this case our real number, but in general we must know that that is a, a scalar. Okay, so we've got the two, again, values corresponding to the again uh, so we've got the two again vectors corresponding to the two again values we've looked at so now this is um, a simple example of two by two but it serves the purpose of illustrating the whole showing the whole process we go through to find the again uh, vectors so i think at this stage i will say this example stop here our next example will involve a three by three matrix to repeat the same process so that you can get used to it for now thank you for listening meet you in the next presentation